Hello everyone and welcome to another video from ContentBot. My name is Dylan, I'm the CTO here at ContentBot as well as one of the lead developers on the project. In this video I'd like to go over some of the new commands we're adding to the long form editor. Firstly, from the long form editor, we can click on the commands button down here to reveal a full list of the commands. This section is known as the command cheat sheet. It allows you to find commands that you might want to use in your document as well as learn more about how they work or simply insert them into your document with the click of a button at least the examples. These examples can then be changed to do the things that you prefer for them to do. Now before we start using these commands to demonstrate how powerful they can be, let's take a look at the basic structure of a command. So we'll start by writing out the basic structures just to get a better understanding of how each part of a command is structured. The first element is the command name, which would be something like this, slash command. The slash indicates to the editor that you're about to run a command. Of course, whatever you put after the slash has to be a registered command in the command cheat sheet. After that, we can add a series of modifiers if the command supports them. I'll go over these a bit later. Followed by two square brackets. Within the square brackets, we could put in any prompt that we want to feed into our command. So this may be you know, a simple phrase, or it could be a variable. Variables are denoted by a hash symbol before the name of the variable, the document title, which would be topic, all the content above this line would be content, but you could also create your own variables, which I'll showcase a little bit later. Lastly, we can add processes to a command, which allows us to store the output to a new variable, which is a great way for creating new variables, or alternatively, we could process individual lines or word from an output. We'll demonstrate this in a bit and it'll start to make a bit more sense. With our command cheat sheet open, let's go ahead and create our first variable. For example, we might want to declare a variable that'll hold the user's name. Perhaps we're creating a sales email. Let's go ahead and write out the command define. Of course, we need to know how define works. There's quite a few commands here, so we might want to just search for it instead. Let's look up define. And we can see here that there is an example of how we could create. Now we could either click to add this into our document or we could simply write it. We're going to be writing it in this example just because we want to learn as we go. I'm going to be writing my name here in square brackets. Those square brackets, that's the value of the variable. And then we will add a processor and say that we want to store it as a variable called username we can proceed to hit control enter or command enter if you're on Mac and that'll create a variable. The system will let us know that a variable was created called username. We can now use that to test whether or not it's stored properly. If we look up log we can get the value from the variable so we can just go log and this is where we could use variables in our square brackets so let's go ahead and add username in there just to see what it's stored and we can see there that username equal to Dylan Orty. So this isn't how you would want it output. You wouldn't want it to look like a comment. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. And let's look at a better way to insert that into the document. Let's look up insert. As we can see, this is another useful command. Let's go ahead and use the example because it's quite simple. Now, of course, we don't want to just output the topic, which would be this value here. Instead, we want to use our own variable that we've already created. So we'll go ahead and say insert username. If I hit enter there, we can see that that has now inserted my name into the document. This is quite useful. However, we could take it a step further by doing something like this. Hello, username. All right. By combining our greeting and our variable together, we can actually output a greeting into the document. And there we go. As you can see, it's a very clever way of creating dynamic content on the fly as you need it. Of course, this is quite a simple example. Something else that we might want to do now that we have this variable available to us is actually restyle the user's name to draw some emphasis to it. So let's look for the style command. As we can see, we have a little example here. So let's go ahead and set that up. We'll say style, and we want to bold the user's name, but we need to look for the correct variable. So bold username. And as you can see now, the username has been made bold. Of course, there are more interesting things that we could do with some of the AI commands instead. Let's start by changing our topic title. How to write compelling content. 
And for demonstration purposes, let's just go ahead and insert. Let's look up the insert command. Insert the topic here. That's great. Now we can just format it and we have our starting point for our document. Now we want to start doing something with the AI. Let's go ahead and create some engaging questions. So we have a questions command here. And you can see that one of the examples uses the topic variable, which is going to grab this value here and feed it into the AI to actually create these compelling questions. So if we click on this example, it's added to our document and the variable's already there, so we don't have to do anything except hit control enter. Now we'll notice that this is going to generate a couple of engaging questions for our topic. Now that we have these questions, we can simply highlight the question and then use the shortcut button here to answer the question. Of course, that works fine. However, with commands, we could go a step further. As an example, we could use a processor to automatically answer these questions after we generate them. So we repeat the steps here. We set up the questions command. However, we're going to introduce a processor. So let's go ahead and do that now by adding these parentheses at the end. The first thing we want to do is tell the command system that we want to deal with each line individually. So we write out line colon. From there, we can go ahead and actually set up some of the outputs that we want to work with. We want to still output the question. So we'll say output each of these lines. And then we want to add an answer command as part of our output. Let's have a look at how that works. If we open up the answer definition, we can see a great example right here. So we'll just go ahead and click within our document and click to insert. But we don't want this static value here. Instead, we're going to use the question, or in this case, the line, to generate the outputs. So let's go ahead and run this now. As you can see, before we do that, we're just going to be creating questions based on the topic. And then for each line, we're going to go ahead and output the line, or the question in this case, as well as set up the answer command based on that question as well. Now we're going to let that run for a second, and you'll see as it outputs the content, it's going to automatically set up that prompt for us, or that command for each one of them. Now, of course, that's a great start. However, you can see that the formatting just isn't quite what we want it to be. So let's just undo that. We go all the way back to where we have our command ready to go. And we'll add a variable now in between our answer and our line. So in this case, we're just going to write out new line. And what that's going to do is separate the question from the answer. So again, we'll run that, let it run for a second. Now you can see that the questions have been separated from the answer commands. This is a great way of setting up those structures so that the final output isn't difficult to format. In terms of formatting, let's do a little bit of cleanup here by just creating a little bit of emphasis on our questions before we start running our answer commands. We could do this after as well. Uh, this is purely just uh, preference. Yeah. So now we've got those. We can just start hitting Control Enter, or again, Command Enter if you're on Mac, to start answering the questions that we just generated with AI. Let those run one at a time. So you can see that that wasn't too bad. And again, we could go through here. We'd have to fact check this content, maybe rewrite some of it if we don't like the tone or whatever we wanted to do with this content. But also, we might just feel that the context just isn't quite where we want it to be. So a great way of changing that is just by coming into this prompt here and adding back the topic for context, or even the content above it. We'll do two showcases here of those two in order. So first off, I'm just adding the topic variable which effectively means that this title will be added into this prompt when we run it through the AI. This content is slightly more contextually accurate to the rest of the article. The more content we have in this article, the more effective the next variable will be, which is the content variable. The way the content variable works is wherever you use it, it will use all the content above that line. So in this case, we're going to be using all of this to drive the context of this question further. So we could even do something like add a full stop, and that'll tell AI that this is a new, a new sentence or a new question, but it uses the context of the previous uh, content that was already generated. 
which again can be very effective in maintaining the context. It's often something that the AI can lose track of, but with commands that is mostly resolved. So here we can see we have one more left, so we'll keep it simple. Just ask the question or answer the question rather with the AI at this point. And then with that done, we have effectively written just about 500 words of content, all based off of just the topic that was fed in, which is very powerful. This is a great start, although there are a lot more versatile things that can be done with commands, which I'd like to showcase to you now. So let's move to the bottom of the document and let's take a look at the explain it like a professor command. We've got a couple of aliases. We could use slash elip or slash explain prof and then just feed in our topic as we see fit. Let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm just going to use the example here because it does feature that topic variable already, which is something we wanted. So this will just use this topic that's up top here instead. Now, just as a reminder, you could still enter your own text here instead if you wanted to, or use another variable that you've created somewhere else in the document. In our case, we're just going to feed in the topic and see what it does. Let's run that and see how that works. So you can see there, it has now created a very interesting explanation on our topic matter. However, this maybe isn't exactly what we wanted to do with it. So let's go ahead now and actually turn that into a variable. So I'm going to show you that these processes for commands can be used anywhere. So in our case, we're going to just write as, and then we're just going to go and set it as prof for professor. And we'll run it again. What we'll see now instead is a small comment that will explain that prof, the variable, has been created. And now we can still insert the prof variable here if we wanted to, right there. But now we can make it a little bit more personalized. We now know that we have these two variables. We should still have the username variables. Let's go ahead and just uh, test that we still do have our variables in play here, just as a showcase that those variables will stay with this document for this session. So we'll just insert username. You can see there's my username that we created in the beginning of our example. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to insert insert um, hello username and then I'm going to add new lines so I'm going to add two new lines followed by the description this is a very simple example but you'll get the idea you see there hello Dylan Orti two new lines know your audience which is important to know who you're writing for so of course this is really useful because you could store any output created by the AI and use it later on to you know create further explanations or feed into your prompts for other commands of course there is a lot of versatility here because you could store any of these outputs so we could have stored the output of our question command or the output of our answer commands we could do all of that and more and then reuse those variables somewhere else down the line Lastly, I would like to show you just how to create a small summary of the content above. So we will just go ahead and look in our commands prompt here for summarize. And we're just going to summarize content, but we'll make it a little bit more interesting by also including the topic before we do the content. So you can see there we can just run the summarize command now. And there we go, we have a summary. So we can now just add a in summary. We have created a 537 word article using mostly commands and a few variables along the way. I hope that this video was helpful. If you do have any questions regarding these commands, please feel free to get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to help and guide you through using them in your own documents.